we have decided, courtesy of Dr. Cedric Garland and his brother, Dr. Frank Garland, to initiate a brand new thing at each and every one of our seminars. We are going to honor one great researcher. And let me tell you folks, there are some beautiful people out there. And the next one's gonna say every day, all in caps, because I don't want you to think every day means just kind of ordinary. What it means is heroes each and every single day. And those are the kind of people that we will be honoring and asking you to honor with us at the seminars. Heroes are all around us, and we really want to honor a very special person today. It's Dr. Frank Garland. Frank is not here with us at the moment because he is not well. Uh, that does not diminish his standing as an excellent researcher. And part of our goal today is to send some messages from all of us to him appreciating his contributions to the field so he can get that added boost that we all need. Dr. Frank Garland is our everyday hero. I am going to briefly read some of these comments here. Frank lived in childhood within a few miles of right here in San Diego. He joined his brother Cedric, whom you will meet also if you haven't already, at UCLA where Frank received a bachelor's degree in history. That's a good combination with vitamin D research, don't you think? I mean, history of science? Powerful. Within days of graduation, the brothers moved to Baltimore. Frank became a PhD student at the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, while Cedric began his scientific career there. Within a short time of their arrival, they attended a seminar where cancer mortality rate maps for the counties of the US were being shown for possibly the first time. Now, after listening for a long time to lectures, some colors and stuff that this person showed were probably entertaining and kept them awake the rest of the day. At any rate, the presenter had come to the Hopkins since it was the nearest school of public health to Washington, D.C. And you'll see more about maps like this at the seminar. They immediately and simultaneously realized the importance of this and formulated a theory that vitamin D and calcium were preventing adenocarcinoma of the colon and breast in the sunnier parts of the US. Their theory was in direct opposition to the conventional belief that sunlight was solely a cause of skin cancer and a peril to be avoided. You have heard that recently, have you not? We haven't finished that argument yet. <laughs> they marshaled evidence and proposed that vitamin D and calcium are capable of preventing cancer. And that has since been totally justified and shown with what we joyously refer to as the Lappy study of 2007. Their paper, Cedric's and Frank's, was published in the International Journal of Epidemiology in 1980. When I first heard and read Cedric's paper in February of 07, and I found that this had been going on since 1980, my first thought was one of those things that you don't say out loud. <laughs> but it definitely was, oh my, why isn't this word getting out? And a mission was born. I had the pleasure one time of giving a talk and somebody said, Carol, you should be a missionary. <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> Lower risk of internal cancer in general had been among the ideas floated in the scientific literature in prior years, unknown to Frank and Cedric, in association with sunlight, but no previous scientific study had presented specific evidence that vitamin D and calcium deficiency were prominent causes of cancer and none had proposed an effect of calcium on risk. Frank and Cedric's largely theoretical paper was the reason for the performance, two of now famous studies published by members of the Garland team and colleagues in the respected international medical journal, The Lancet. The first was a 19-year historical cohort study in Chicago that found people whose vitamin D and or calcium intakes were in the top fifth of the population and had half Half, got that? Half 
the incidence of colon cancer as those in the bottom fifth. This was the first study to find an effect of oral intake of calcium and vitamin D on the risk of cancer. Folks, today you are going to hear still the pioneers of vitamin D research. We are all, each and every one of us, privileged beyond measure to be in the presence of these giants in the field. And I thank each and every one of our speakers for sharing that. Publications by the Garland team led the American Cancer Society to describe a new barrage of studies of vitamin D and cancers of the breast, ovary, kidney, bladder, and endometrium. The clinical status of vitamin D has remarked, <laughs> sorry, I hadn't read this one earlier. Uh, since Frank and the team were joined by Carol and Leo Baggerly of Grassroots Health. <laughs> it's been a joy. <laughs> you will see the name of Dr. Frank Garland on research cited throughout the day. He is co-author of two presentations you will hear today. Frank is the driving force motivating the scientific productivity of the San Diego research team. He really doesn't have a whip, I know the guy. Uh, his devotion to the pursuit of the scientific truth about vitamin D and realization of its great potential to benefit humanity is a major factor in the emergence of vitamin D as a potent tool for preventing cancer and type 1 diabetes. Today, we wish Dr. Frank Garland well and give him our warmest hopes for a speedy recovery. And I want the loudest applause you can possibly give to this giant of our science. There is also a card outside in the lobby out there. Those of you that want to send Frank a message, please stop by and sign it. Put a little note on it, wishing him both well and thanking him profoundly for the research that he has contributed to over the years. Uh, I know he will enjoy hearing from you. And right now, I would like to invite a few of the people, our speakers in the audience who know Frank Garland, just to come say a word or two about the great things that they think Frank has done. Ed, would you like to say something? Sure. Well, Carol, thank you. It's a, a very fitting tribute to a dear friend and colleague who it's been my privilege to work with for 25 years now. And I, I couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Carol. Yes. Thank you, Carol, and members of the audience, distinguished guests, for your patience. Uh, Frank Garland is my personal hero, and uh, you know I can barely say this, even though I'm a scientist and I'm supposedly unemotional. But uh, something about what Carol said and the way she said it uh, got through the, the very depths of me. I've known Frank um, well all of my life. We've spent all, countless moments together in everything you can possibly imagine epidemiological. And we share a strange phenomenon of realizing things at about the same moment. And uh, so it's, a great, it's been a great pleasure with me, and I, I expect it will continue to be, to work with him. He can finish my sentences, I can finish his. Ed Gorham can finish them too, uh, recently, uh, say in the past 25 years. But everything we've done, we've done together. And this is one of the few events where my brother is available, but not with us today. And it's um, um, something that will uh, I will learn to live with, but I, I'm so pleased that he's been so uh, graciously recognized. One more applause. 